Friday, everybody, and welcome into the Graham Lick and McLean podcast presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Graham Lick and McLean. It's me, it's Eric McLean, and it's intern Nick who is joining us to break down this tiebreaker situation, potential Come on. tiebreaker situation before we get into all these games because we'll still preview week nine. Uh, Matt, right. before we introduce intern Nick, I want your on-air thoughts, um, unfiltered, what grade would you give intern Nick so far for his work with us? <laughs> uh, there, there isn't a grade high enough. If I say A+, plus, it doesn't really give you guys the understanding of the work that has gone in here. Nick, you've been a legend. We appreciate that. And, uh, you know, the people have been hearing about us. The people have been hearing yeah. us reference intern Nick. Who the heck is he? Well, we're unmasking the superhero today, brother. You're here. <laughs> You're joining us. Give a little uh, a little bit about yourself real quick. Introduce yourself to the Gramlick and McLean world real fast. Sure. I said, appreciate you guys having me on. You know, there's a face to my name now. Um, like I, said, uh, I was started out just as a fan, uh, right? Like, I listened to Kelly on the roar growing up, like, with me and my dad driving the school. Up. Uh, <laughs> and then Emac, Clemson legend, a uh, you know, longtime fan it is. Uh, as you can see, I'm a student here, I'm a senior, got two months left before I graduate. Sad times, but you know, excited for the next step. That's right. That's right. Well, you've been killing it with us, man, and we're super excited uh, for, for this part, for the on-air part uh, for you here. So we, we gave you a little bit of a task, and it's so funny. You actually heard it uh, on air before we actually asked you to do it. So of you were kind of like, whoa, 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 homework assignment I didn't even know about. Um, and you took the initiative and you did it. So we wanted kind of this like AI, supercomputer, super Nick model of what would happen and how would it happen if these three teams, Miami, SMU, Clemson, run the table and you laid it all out there for us. So why don't we just start with um, the potential scenarios, you kind of run through those, and then maybe we'll jump in. Who the heck do people need to pull for if they are said fan? We'll get into that after. Sure. So as with the criteria that Miami, Clemson, and SMU would all win out and remain undefeated in the ACC, Miami would finish first with their conference uh, tiebreaker being uh, with the conference opponents win loss record, they would finish 26 and 38 with a 0. 0.406 win percentage. And let me, uh, let me stipulate this too. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't lay this up better. How did, tell us how you got to this point too. Like where did these numbers come from? How did you kind of collect this super data? Sure. So I was trying to use AI to try and mask it all together, but it was not up to date, unfortunately. So I do it a little fashion way, do it by hand. Um, so I use the SP plus rankings from post week eight, um, using those rankings to figure out which t from week nine to the end of the season, which team would win and lose and then mm -hmm. track that all up together and then figure out how the final rankings and then use that to predict how the ACC standings would finish. Right. And with that, Miami would come in first, Clemson would come in second, and SMU would come in third. Come on, man. So are these just uh, are these just like favorites, or did you put in any type of like underdog scenario? How, how did you get kind of the winners there? Right. So the the rankings use um, how teams play from week to week. Um, so the SP Plus rankings they'll they'll shift from week to week. So these final predictions won't probably come true just because the <laughs> rankings shift every week. Um, but like I said. It, it it was fun to do. I haven't done anything quite like that before, um, but, you know, it was fun. Well, yeah. and Mac, of course, as we're saying this right now, I hate to say this to SMU and Miami fans. Of course, Clemson is a bye week, but, you know, one of them well, might yeah. lose this weekend. And then this whole discussion hey, 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 easy, is, easy, is just easy. hilarious. <laughs> but so, Nick, as you were saying, basically Miami's opponents, if it all went as planned, their ACC opponents would finish with a 406 winning percentage. Clemson's ACC opponents would finish with a 375 winning percentage, SMU's 328. So if all Ooh. of that went to plan, it would be Miami Clemson in the ACC championship. But of course, things can happen. Now, when you look at, okay, so we've gotten past this scenario of all teams are undefeated. If all these teams finish undefeated, walk us through which other ACC programs these teams need to root for, meaning the teams that my only Miami plays and Clemson and SMU don't, 
the teams only Clemson play, SMU and Miami don't, the teams only SMU plays and Miami and Clemson don't. You want those teams to do well because that will lead to your opponents having a better conference record, which this is all stupid, it's just bizarre. to be clear. It's bizarre. <laughs> but when you get rid of divisions, I mean, this is kind of the scenarios that can happen. So, Nick, who do Miami, Clemson, and SMU need to be rooting for besides their own teams? Right. So they need to be cheering for every team they play on their schedule. Right. Minus, the week that, minus the week that they play them, of course. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a Hurricane fan, you are a temporary diehard fan of – the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and Syracuse Orange. Okay. Um, and then Clemson fans hate to say it, but we're we're we're, we're part of the Wolfpack family now. Um, <laughs> and then if, if you're sharing for the shirt? Mustang, do you have a shirt? Is it on the way? Are you ready for I'm, that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just gotta hook up Amazon, um, <laughs> look it up, and then uh, SMU, uh, you're a Boston College Eagle from now on. Wow. 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 That is <laughs> shocking. Okay, and then. Man, when I just think of all this and the way it's going to perform, it's going to be nuts. Here's the deal. Nick, we're going to have you just continue to do these SP. We're going to call them the Nick rankings and and ratings. So that's what we're going to do moving forward, where you just have to keep us updated. You have to keep the people in the know. And maybe a a, a group changes. Maybe there's a new fan of a team that they need to really be excited about based on moving forward. Um, That was your debut, bro. How'd it feel? This was great. Killed it. It was was awesome. Like I said, (laughs) I've been a big fan of you guys now that I'm on the my first debut on the podcast. Excited. This is awesome. You're so the good. Best. You're the best. We appreciate you doing this. Um, we're going to go to games now. We're going to break them all down. Nick, thank you for your time. Thank you for updating the people and telling them, uh, Clemson fans, that they have to go out and buy Wolfpack stuff. You know what else yeah. Clemson fans need to go do is go to Ingalls right down the street and load up because we have a weekend off. So you get to be at home, cook from your own kitchen, do your own thing. Uh, so real quick, make that happen. A message from our friends over at Ingalls. And then let's jump into some games, KG. Let's go. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Okay, Mac, thanks again to intern Nick for joining us. Excellent work, as always. Yeah, the chaos okay. continues. Yeah, yeah. Proud so we're Papa, so- you know, Just see him, let, let his wings fly. You gotta let him go. Yeah, let him go. He did great. Mac, when someone says, I grew up listening to you, it just, <laughs> it makes you feel so old. Yeah. Like, what was he? In middle school when I was on the radio? Oh, man. He was actually legit. He was for sure in middle school. Maybe elementary school, you know? Wow. Thanks for that. Um, okay, let's get into week nine. Let's get into these games, Mac. And we're going to start with Miami. Number six, Miami is hosting Florida State. Miami is a 21-point favorite, 7 p.m. Jeez. on ESPN. As I said on our Cam Ward episode, by the way, Miami fans, if you missed our Cam Ward episode, go listen to it. That You won't want to miss that. I thought, I really think realistically this number is low. So... I just I think FSU has looked Mac, they're one and six. Like I hear you. I hear you. I mean Clemson, how much did Clemson two. beat him by? Clemson only won by like ten. Yeah. Was that, and was it was there. at Florida State and Clemson yeah. obviously kind of didn't put their foot on the gas. But I think I know my Did we talk about that? Did we talk about my con- conspiracy theory with that? No, tell me. I think because he was beating Bobby Bowden's record, he was like intentionally Uh-oh. not disrespectful being respectful maybe not i don't know if i've ever said that publicly or not so there you go there like it is. <laughs> yeah i believe it but also miami has not been covering so we'll just Great we'll say point. that and florida state has won the last three games in this series keep that in mind some injuries for florida state it looks like cam davis darius washington are both unlikely to travel so florida state just continues to have issues and i guess they're going to roll block it brock block brock glenn back out there mac i want your initial thoughts on this game and then i think we're going to use some of the underdog numbers to talk about this game because to sit here and say you know this is how fsu wins i i think the way fsu wins is just absolute chaos in college football but i'm not sure there's an actual formula and i hate that i'm i'm sounding really disrespectful but i'm just honestly saying what i think mac what are your thoughts 
I, I think you were looking for is a divine intervention. And I've said that a couple of times sure. this year and it's been true. It's been sure. true. Um, yeah. And it, it is sad, right? Because, you know, the expectations preseason was this was going to be a mammoth of a game. I mean, this was going to be a big old beast. Game day was going to be there. Top 15 teams, top 10 teams, whatever. And, and here we are, uh, you know, with the number six team in the country and a team that is just not good. Not good. Has no identity. Has nothing to do. Uh, but the silver lining of it all, we get to see Cam Ward. That's the biggest thing. Every week, I just said, do we get to see Cam Ward play? Yes, we do. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, he's going to light it up. Now, again, as I mentioned, and KG snarkily laughed at me, <laughs> this four State pass defense isn't the worst. They're actually the third best in the ACC. Take that for whatever you want to do with it. Um you know, and, and just seeing how these guys execute will be fascinating. And how do they want to do it? You know, I, I think what we've really found from Miami this entire year, they are very balanced. They can run it. They can pass it. They can do whatever they want. Um, but it's been a little interesting in conference play. It's been a little interesting these last couple of games, kind of playing with your food, if you will. I've heard multiple people kind of calling it that. So do we see them kind of get right? Do we see Miami, you know, have their best game that they've had in a long time and it not come down? to some type of play at the end of the game. We'll see. I would love for that to happen. Um, but again, I think Miami rolls. I mean, I think they totally dominate these Knowles. And, and one thing I do want to bring back is two years ago, Florida State destroyed these guys, like mm -hmm. murdered yeah. them. Held them to like, I don't remember when the field goal was, but it was probably in trash time, three-point field goal uh, to, to get three on the board there. And after the game, Mario Cristobal was asked, do you think Florida State was running up the score? And he said, well, you know, it's our job to stop them. It's their job to score. Our time's coming. Some kind of abbreviation of that. Well, that time is now. So I'm fascinated to see, you know, how many points do they score? What do they try to do, KG? What does this game look like? Because I think if Miami can make a statement, I think they do that. And uh, especially with a coach that played there, been there, done that, like he gets this rivalry like nobody else, uh, I think – not that he's out for blood, might be out for blood. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think it would be it would mean everything to Cristobal to get his first win over Florida State at Miami. My big question mark in this game for Miami, Mac, is the defense. Yeah. The defense just hasn't looked like we thought it would. And frankly, I don't think it's looked like it needs yeah. to look for you to accomplish all of your goals. Correct. I'm not sure you beat Clemson in a potential ACC championship with the defense playing like this. Now Clemson has some defensive concerns of its own. Don't get me, don't get me started. But that's my big question, and especially with this off this FSU offense, Mac, that has looked so inept, that doesn't know who they are, that doesn't know what they want to do. Really, has no identity. If you let this FSU offense go out there and score twenty plus, yeah, I've got questions. So right. I, I think this needs to be a, a statement game from the Miami defense. Yeah, that, that is a very good point. And again, a, a team that it just feels like I, I went on a Miami podcast the other day uh, talking with them and, and they said, you know, it's not like we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. We're blowing both our feet off when we do bad things. Like it's not good. It's not good. So I agree. You know, you want to see that defense do their thing, get right. And, and I think what is the most telling, honestly, KG, is as we're about to transition a little bit here, talk about some of these underdog picks. As I'm scrolling there is not a Florida State quarterback list. Right. Like that's right. how up in the air and who knows where the heck this team is right now. So it is Correct. fascinating to say the least and big, big problem. So you're right. The Miami defense needs to make an absolute statement. And what's interesting though, to me, the total is 54 and a half. So if you do some quick math and you take, you know, 21 away from that, they still are thinking, you know, that FSU is going to score some points here. It's going to be interesting to see what it looks like and how many. Yeah, yeah, great point, Max. So let's let's get into some of these underdog numbers for this game. Underdog Fantasy, use our code GMPOD to sign up, get $1,000 in bonus cash. It's the easiest place to play fantasy sports. We love it. Uh, we're both coming off good weekends, both coming off weekends in the green. So let's so keep real. it going. And, Mac, I have, you've heard me say this many times. The best pick to take. On underdog fantasy, any given week in the ACC, is Xavier Restrepo higher than 0.5 rushing or receiving touchdowns? Because yep. that dude's going to score. 
He's yep. absolutely going to score. He has 88 and a half receiving yards as his number there. That's a little bit of a high number. Six catches. I would almost lean higher on that one. Longest reception, 31 and a half. But that's what I like in this game. And then, weirdly, Mac, I'm not trying to be negative, but on all the Cam Ward numbers, I kind of like higher than 0.5 interceptions. I think he's probably going to throw one. Just because that's what he, he didn't throw one against Louisville, but you you tell me how good this FSU defense is, allegedly. I could see <laughs> him just trying to – because he really tries to fit that ball into such tight windows, yeah. and most of the time he does a great job. So I would lean that one. I could also see – I don't know, Mac, what do you think? The Which one do you feel like is a is a better pick? Three Higher or lower than 310.5 passing yards for Cam Ward or at the 2.5 passing touchdowns mark? Yeah, I, I'm pulling up some some numbers here because I didn't want to speak out of turn. I didn't want to be silly or wrong. So I'm pulling up the defensive numbers here for Florida State, and they have two all year long. They are like two dead last in forced turnovers. So this might be don't the time. take that one. I don't know this about that one. This might, you could be due. Law of averages could be a real thing. Um, Matt, Cam Ward, he, he can throw a pick. <laughs> Now he's still he going to throw, throw for it. like 350, but he might throw a pick. I just don't know if this is the team to catch it. Is that, that's oh, my no. thing. Now you're flip-flopping. Now you're flipping they on the FSU down. defense. They can knock it down. They just won't they catch just it. Catch. That's the difference. That's the difference. Got it. Um, okay. Tell me what you think of, about Cam's this, You talk about PBUs and stuff. You can pick all of that in the NFL stuff. The NFL pick and and just things are crazy. I was going through that. I got lost in the sauce. I spent hours <laughs> just looking at all the options. So if you're an NFL person, underdog fantasy is your spot. Anything you can ever think of, it's there. But anyway, back to this. Cam Ward, I, I think he's going to have a field day passing it in, in regards to scoring. So let's go over, let's go higher, two and a half touchdowns. 310, does it in his sleep. I think yeah. hires the play there too, just because they're going yeah. to want to to do something. And again, this is like a Heisman type thing. It's a brand. It's, it's great footage. It's going to look good doing it. Um, so I, I really like those. When you talk about Xavier Restrepo, he thrives in this game. Like he is always so, so yeah. good. The touchdown automatic. If you want to do a couple, you want to go back to him. I'm fine with the receiving yards too. I know that's a lot, but he is going to be on one. Like it's so personal to him, this game. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee there's some conversations going and you can actually do receptions for Xavier at six. I might go higher than that too. You can only choose one per different, you know, kind of thing you're doing here. Or but player. I like all of those Cook, kicking points. Andre Borgalis, eight and a half. Really? I okay. I think that's yeah. the play. I think these guys are going to score a bunch. And, and, you know, maybe you get a stop, you get a field goal in there. For FSU, I mean, it's it's so hard looking at these it's numbers. Slim I mean, it's slim pickings, number one. But I'm thinking I'm just going lower. Like, what are these guys going to be able to do? I, who's playing quarterback? So if you're going – if you're looking at any of these receiving numbers – I don't know. I feel like it's a really good play to go down. So yeah. there's some good ones in here. I'm sure they're going to adjust. If you're hearing this now, if you want to wait till game day, a little closer to the game, it's a night game. Uh, see where those numbers kind of go. Uh, but there's some good stuff in there you can dive into. Yeah, for sure. And use our code GMPOD when you sign up. All right, Mac, let's get into the next three games of our big four breakdown. Then we'll do a little speed round. Louisville is at Boston College tonight, Friday night, 730 p.m. on ESPN2. These Friday night games have been cuckoo. They've been wild. And even though Duke beat Florida State last week, most of the time, and we talked about this last week, the road team has done very well yeah. in these games. Now, Louisville is a road favorite, so that's a little different. Both teams are three and four against the spread uh, this season, so it's kind of neither one's great at covering, of course. Louisville is one and three in one-score games this year, so if this game is close, could be interesting. Of course, all three of those losses are to top 25 teams. And then when you look at Boston College, I, this offense has really kind of taken a step back a little bit. I, mm -hmm. They haven't been as consistent. Donovan Ezeraku has been just the guy, though. And I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm intrigued to see what he can do. Ranks third in the country in total sacks for BC's defense. But I have more faith in the Louisville offense coming to this game, Mac. The defenses, maybe I lean BC because I, I thought Louisville's mm -hmm. defense was going to be better than it is. But I definitely have more faith in Louisville's offense, even going up to BC. Right, yeah. And I'm right there with you with all of that. I think if you, you look at all four of the units, you know, offense, defense for each, 
you trust the Louisville offense the most. Like they they're going to score, they're going to be able to do their thing. Uh, they're going to move the ball. I mean, we just saw them coming off a game where they scored 45 points and lost. <laughs> That's hard. It's hard to do that. Um, and, and it just feels like they're getting a little bit of their stride, you know, with Isaac Brown in the running back room, true freshman that look has looked really electric. Now they did lose a receiver. I don't know if you saw this KG. Yeah, we did. We went back and forth. Not they just lost a receiver. receiver. Mid season, midweek. I mean, it's I crazy. Colin Lacey was really emerging and he yeah. was emerging as more of a target and he had the big kick return. Right. In the game, wow. in in their in their last game against Miami, and he yeah. just opts out. He was hurt in training camp. Has only played in four games. I'm guessing he's opting out to transfer somewhere else. But he already transferred to Louisville. It'll be the third third school. I just, yeah. oh man, I don't know. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. And I mean, just the and that affects the locker room midweek. By the way, sure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's such a weird deal. Um, we're just in a strange place. We really are. But hey. Do what you want. Do whatever you want. There's no rules. Uh, so so have fun. Go train. And, uh, you know, see wherever you end up. Uh, but, yeah, I, I hate it. I don't like it at all. Uh, but it, it's weird. And so you're down a weapon there. Other guys have to step yeah. up. Um, you know, again, with what you've seen from, you know, this Louisville team pushing the ball downfield. Uh, I mean, Brooks has been sick. That dude is fun to watch. He has been as advertised, playing at a very, very high level. Um, and then you, you have a, a Boston College team that – you know, it's just kind of weird. They just have been out of sync since Tommy has come back and, and you know, hasn't really quite looked like the team that we thought they were going to eventually end up being. Um, and it's it's just kind of strange. You know, same thing from, uh, you know, the running back room. We thought that was going to really take off, and it just hasn't. It just it really hasn't. So I'm leaning Louisville here. Uh, it, it's, again, it opened at 7. It's at 7.5 now. I think the cards get it done and finally, you know, get back in the win column. I think Louisville wins. I think BC covers. I think this is a weird Ooh. Friday night game, and I'm getting a touchdown and a hook with the line. I, I'm going to take Boston College to cover. Give me just a weird right. game. Weird I Friday night. I'm thinking like 10. I'm thinking 10 is kind okay. of the number. That's where I am. We'll see. That's where I am. I'm intrigued to see how just how the locker room is with Colin Lacey yeah. just piecing out. Yeah. Uh, that'll be interesting and see if BC can get back on track. All right, Mac, what about the game you're going to be at? Number 22, SMU at Duke, 8 p.m. ACC Network. SMU's an 11.5 point favorite. SMU's ranked. Duke is 6 and 1. I, I'm not sure you would have guessed, Mac, in week nine that you guys would be at Duke SMU. SMU also, just for our, our degenerate friends out there, this is from intern Nick, they're 5 and 1 against the spread this year. So keep that in mind. But, and Mac, I would got to say this RJ Maryland and his injury against Stanford, he's out for the season. ACL is what they're saying. Oh, just brutal. Love watching okay. him play. So SMU also down a weapon. Um, but overall, back the Duke offense just it, it feels like when you compare these offenses, it's not even close. I, I just wonder if Duke's gonna be able to score enough. Yeah, no, it's uh it, it, that is interesting. You know, to talk to start there, uh they they have not been able to do really anything. I mean, it's just consistency wise, you've got some guys hurt. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see if Jordan Moore's back and, and fully ready to go. Um, who steps up if not, uh, you know, Hagens and Eli Pancole and company, you've got two tight ends out for Duke. Um, it's just that time of year, you know, it's that time of year, but you know, I don't know because this opportunistic defense from SMU has been really good and they're taking away the ball. They're scoring touchdowns. I mean, they're playing at a very high level. I think the last thing's kind of getting back to hitting the quarterback and, and sacking the quarterback and getting tackles for loss, which Duke has been a lead at. They're number one in the country when you look at their defense. So it's it's a really weird kind of mismatchy game. I think if you look at the units, like we just were talking about with the other game, the Duke offense is by far the worst. And it's like there's a significant gap. Uh, and then you've got this offense and what they've been able to do. So can they put it together? Can they find a way? You know, it, it'll be interesting. We will see. Uh, to go back on the R.J. Maryland deal, yeah, he started the year just exploded, had unbelievable mm. numbers, 162 yards, was fantastic, really big piece of that game winner, and then kind of faded away, kind of disappeared, and really these last two or three games had reemerged and re-became, you know, that target, that guy that was, you know, such a weapon and such a, a, a huge piece of the offense you got to go next man. And it stinks to have that caliber of player out, uh, but that, that's just what you have to do. I think Kevin Jennings, uh, you know, the, the, the young quarterback for SMU has gotten better and better and better. 
every week. And so last week I thought was the, the best we'd seen them. And so how do you keep doing that? You have a really tall task this week going against this Duke team. They're going to bring pressure. They're going to try to confuse you. Um, you know, I think Manny's one of the best at, at hiding things, disguising things. I mean, you look back at all his defenses prior, but specifically at Penn State last year, I mean, they were locking dudes up and knocking dudes out. I mean, that's just what they did. And, you know, that has translated here to Duke as well, being, you know, number one in the ACC in sacks. So what's, what's you know, SMU's plan going to be? How are they going to move KJ out of the pocket? How are they going to get him running lanes and, and not allow those guys just to tee off uh, and, and get to the quarterback? So you throw some screens in there. You throw some draws. You try to just throw their timing off where they can't just kind of be in a, a jacked up third down, let's go kind of situation or stance. So excited to see that and, and see what they bring to the table. It's going to be fun in person. Uh, there's a lot of legends back. Coach Steve Spurrier is going to be there. David oh. Cutcliffe is going to be there. Uh, so there, there's going to be some cool stuff, and I, I can't wait. Always love being in Durham. And I got to see my guy, Coach David Feely, KG. I'm going to be in there in the weight room, getting swole, getting big. And uh, we're actually bringing him on TV. We're going to get him on TV. I can't wait. Okay. I know all the meatheads out there, uh, no offense, Mac, will <laughs> absolutely right. love that. Mac, something to keep in mind when you t- talk about the Duke defense, the Duke defense was very effective against a guy like Haynes King. They held Haynes King yeah. to just 30 rushing yards, and he, he did pass yeah. for two touchdowns. George Tech won the game, but Jamal Haynes was the guy that really killed them. So it feels like Duke has pretty good track record against a dual-threat guy. Can right. they limit Jennings? Because like you said, Mac, the Duke defense is going to have to – really have kind of a Herculean performance to win this game. Right. And SMU has been really good on the road. They've won nine straight road games, which is really crazy. Um, most and in the of country. Course, Number one in yeah, the country most, right now. Best record in the country right now, or, or uh, current longest streak in their defense, four seventeen turnovers. I, I think, you know, if, if, if SMU wins a turnover margin, they're probably going to be just fine and win the game. Right. I'm, I'm leaning SMU to cover. There we go. I think go. Duke. I thought you were tricking me for a second. After Duke. Duke should have beaten Florida State by like a lot more, especially when you force four Florida State turnovers. So I just don't trust Duke, to be honest. So I'm taking yeah. SMU minus 11 and a half. Yeah, I think that's a smart play. And again, you have a team that is really ascending right now, playing high level football in SMU. And you've got a Duke team that's like, they're getting by. They're finding ways. That's important. It's important to find a way to win, but they're just kind of squeaking by and, and, and getting these, you know, games where they're not really finishing, but kind of finishing and, Maybe it's more the other team reason why they won that game. So I'm right there with you. I think SMU puts on a uh, you know a bit of a clinic and continues to flex their muscles in ACC play. Mac, I want to extend a welcome back message to our friends in Blacksburg, Virginia. I feel like <laughs> We've more been Virginia on you. Tech fans. Yes, I mean we love Virginia Tech, and you know we hyped you up. Then we had the Vanderbilt game, now ranked Vanderbilt. And things fell off from there. But Virginia Tech's playing really good football. And we're going to welcome Virginia Tech fans back to the pod. Georgia Tech is traveling to Virginia Tech, the Battle of the Techs. Virginia Tech is a 10.5 point favorite noon on ACC Network. Interesting note on this game. The underdog has covered nine of the last 10 games between Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. An intern Nick stat right there. (laughs) I'm, I'm leaning that way. Because I think in some ways, Virginia Tech has to come back to reality a little bit. They've played great, but this hasn't been who they've been all year. Now, have you completely flipped a switch? Is this you now? I, I'd love to see that for Virginia Tech, but I'm not sure I believe it yet. And then you have the big question mark with Haynes King. We're just going to assume he's not playing, Max. So then you're not getting a full string Georgia Tech. You're getting Pyron in there, and, and hopefully they can be more effective than they were against Notre Dame. But of course, Virginia Tech isn't Notre Dame, and I know I'm being hard on Virginia Tech. I am glad Virginia Tech's playing well. I just still feel like it's going to be a close game, Mac. I'm going to take Georgia Tech to cover the plus 10.5. I think Virginia Tech wins, but I think this is a close game. And you also, it's a noon game. The atmosphere will still be amazing. Right. But I I might feel differently if this was like an 8 p.m. game for Georgia Tech covering. Interesting. I don't know mm. about that, KG. I don't know about that. Mm. We'll see. Uh, I do. While you were continuing to just beat down our friends at Virginia Tech, uh, <laughs> I do want to bring up. Uh, I just Google searched highest ranking tech schools in America. Oh, uh, Stanford, who does not have tech in their name, 
University of Cal Berkeley, who does not have tech in their name. I'm and then down there on the list, Georgia Tech. Virginia Tech is nowhere on this list. They're nowhere to be oh, found. No. So sorry, guys. I don't know if you need to drop the tech. I don't know. You're not mentioned <laughs> in the AI search from Google okay. right there. Can you With please say head, something Say something nice about Virginia Tech, please? I'm because... about to. I'm about to. I'm about to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the Hokies are going to beat these dudes down. I mean, it's it's – it's not going to be close, I don't think. I think you're crazy for taking Georgia Tech with the points. Really? I think that where they are offensively right now, these last two games, and really three, I'll go back to the Miami loss, they have looked fantastic, mm-hmm. really effective running the ball, uh, playing keep away, but also just like scoring and not caring. Like it's a weird kind of you know tempo to what they want to do offensively. Kyron has been really fun to watch, very effective with how he's playing ball. It hasn't been like these outrageous numbers where you're like, dang, that's cool. But it has been super smooth. And the way that he does it, I- I've loved it. I thought, this is what I thought we were getting all right. year long. APR, the nation's sack leader. If if you have Pyron in there, who maybe he's dealing with some stuff, maybe not. If you have yeah. a true freshman in there, gee, look out. I-, I think APR really continues to to dictate what teams can do, what they want to do. Um, I've got the Hokies by two plus touchdowns. The quarterback situation for Georgia Tech does give me pause, obviously. Yeah. But I also just, I really believe in what Key is building there. I don't think they're going to go up there and get shellacked. I love that guy. I love that guy. But I think also, quarterback's the most important position, and you're missing your best player. Well, you're sure. missing your best I, player. I totally get that. And that's why this number is so high, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Georgia Tech's pass defense has been pretty bad. Their rush defense yeah. has been better. So, I sure. mean, that's what, Mac, if you're Georgia Tech or anybody playing Virginia Tech right now, it's like, make them throw the ball. Do everything you right. can. Now, Kyron Jones is a capable thrower, but you sure. at least need to make him at least try. You've got to find a way to get the ball out of Basial right. Tootin's hands because that guy right. has been <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, I saw, I saw this thing where it was like the game plan uh, for Virginia Tech. I think it was the last two games. And it's like an old Madden clip or screenshot of mm-hmm. a play that's really called like halfback slam or something like yeah. that, just right through the B gap. But they changed it through run through a dude's face. Uh, <laughs> and that's what he's been doing. That's what Basial Tootin's been doing, just so y'all know. Yeah. <laughs> Tootin's been scooting. I'll tell you that, Mike. He's been scooting. You love to see it. I love his name, Basial Tootin. I mean, it just. I've never heard that name before in my whole life. You, probably never, Kelsey never Riggs, again. Taylor Tannenbaum. Love that dude's name. <laughs> yeah. There's something about it. Okay, Mac, speed round. Let's just give a thought on. on each of these games. UNC is at Virginia. This is going to be a good game. Virginia, three and a half point favorite, noon on CW. You know who I'm riding with. My who's <laughs> all day long. Now, UNC and Virginia, they have a very back and forth. I mean, Virginia beat UNC last year. Who could forget? About that yeah, game. Top 10. Top 10 UNC, yeah, by the top way. Top 10 UNC. It, this UNC Virginia, it always feels like the team that has the most to lose, loses. It's just how that game goes. So it, by that standard, UNC might win the game. But I'm going to take Virginia at home. UNC coming off a bye, right, Mac? And Virginia coming off a tough game against Clemson. So right. I'm not sure how Virginia is feeling. But my question here with this game if Calandria doesn't look great early, do they go to Tony Musket? Because Tony Musket looked so good in the yeah. last two drives against Clemson. I don't know what they do right. there. Yeah, that's uh, a great point. Um, and I, I am fascinated myself for it because he he got down the field with these. And listen, I get it. Yeah. It was probably backups uh, that he was going against and whatever. Clemson, when they are at X level uh, in regards to points up, it's like the defense just forgets how to play. I get that. I understand. Seems to be a trend. But, it still happened. It still happened. And it's something to think about. I thought it was also interesting and, you know, kind of a, a fascinating spot here, KG, that I saw, uh, you know, Coach Elliott and maybe a couple other coaches were saying, you know, we need we need Calandria to take some more chances, which mentally I'm just like, ah, uh, where am what? I? Because, you know, I wanted to reel it back and I wanted to not throw picks and I haven't done that in four games. And now – yeah. I need to take more chances. It is who he is, and I get that. And and that's like, you know, you think of these quarterbacks that are relatively turnover prone, but with the turnovers comes unbelievably brilliant plays too. Like you got to take both. So so did they overcoach him almost? Did they do it too much 
to where now he doesn't feel like he's playing, you know, super free and, and doing his thing. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see if he cuts it loose, see if he makes some some crazy type plays, maybe good, maybe bad, um, in this game. And also with UNC, I mean, as, as weird as this season has been, they still have one of the best running backs in the country yeah. in Amarian Hampton, and that dude is a beast. So excited to see him out there, see what he can do. It is a super tight game. I think just because it's at home, I'm rocking with your who's as well. Welcome. Welcome, Mac. I, I have some <laughs> concerns, but I have to ride with my who's, and I hope the crowd yeah. is is decent because I'm still mad at Virginia fans for not showing up and not helping your team beat Louisville because they probably should have. And then the season would be looking somewhat different. Okay, Mac, our final two games are two classic ACC clashes. <laughs> you have Wake Forest at Stanford, 3.30 p.m. ACC Network. Let Wake me be Forest super student. mean for a second. Super yeah. mean. And I'm sorry I even, I'm, I'm even doing this, but it's true. Oh, no. Oh, Do no, you think there's 500 people at this game? No. No. Right, it's going to be sad. And that just the game itself will be sad. I mean, those are two definitely two of the worst teams in the league. So, you know, just hope everyone has fun. And then Oregon State at Cal, 4 p.m. ESPN2. A little foreshadowing? Be a better... Is this an ACC opponent? A new ACC opponent? An... Well, no. Oregon State is not in the ACC. <laughs> but uh, I bet they, they wish they were. At Cal. Cal's a 10-point favorite. Oregon State, they're 4-3. and three. They just played UNLV pretty close. I think this will be a good game. I, I'm not sure Cal covers. But I think Cal wins. Yeah. They need to win this Here's game. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Cal is like praising Jesus that they do not have an ACC game this week. They are so yeah. excited to not play a conference game because <laughs> they, they haven't won one. And it's been the smallest Crazy. like margin of loss uh, right. that, that anybody's ever had. I mean, I think it's nine points. Is that the case? In four games? That That's sounds crazy. right. That's asinine. Uh, you're right there. You're so close. But go get a big dub. Fly that flag against the pack too, baby. We need it. We need you to do it. Amazing. Cal does not have an ACC win, but they won at Auburn because that's the world we're living in it's right more, now. Unreal. A tougher league, you know. The ACC is a tougher league. I get it. I understand yeah, that. True. Mac, for anyone concerned, <laughs> I am not dying. I'm just uh, coughing when I mute my mic, but I'm fine. I'm going to live. You look great. So, you sound better. Uh, big shout out to Nick. We're making a debut. Enter Nick. Let's go, baby. Uh, we were kind of mean on this podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's kind of truthful where we are right now mm. with some of these teams. So where part of we? it, you know, we love you. We don't ever hate you, but we're going to talk about it. All in good fun. All in good fun. All in good fun. We'll celebrate you when, when, when you win. But uh, we need you guys to help. We need you over to YouTube. Subscribe. Jump on this channel with us. You guys have been doing awesome. Uh, the viewership continues to explode. We really, really appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun just doing this with you guys. Uh, and, of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts, SiriusXM, rate, review, subscribe there as well. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see you all.